What's happening, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of Style Sessions. My name is Aaron. With me, as always, is Jeremy. We are a podcast dedicated to helping you cultivate your own personal individual style. What's going on? How much? Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, we always start these things off. We're always <laughs> laughing. It's uh, always, well, that's because we're always like running around like crazy people yeah. trying to get everything set up because it's. We need a producer. We do. Yeah. <laughs> we're we getting do. to the level where we need at least someone to watch <laughs> all of the electronics that just choose to work when they oh want to. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they are they are temperamental little little boogers. Yeah, they, they, uh, they only want to work sometimes. Yeah. Um but hey, whatever. We're yeah. here. Um I mean gosh, we're getting we're this getting is, like 10ish. This is episode uh 9, nine I ten, think. Somewhere in that area. Yeah. yeah, I I uh I know that, you know, we obviously we record, you know, it's not like we do these live, you know, yeah. these are recorded and, and yeah. whatever. And so I know we just got an editing one. Um but it's been nice. It's been a really good yeah. thing for me personally to um, kind of take the time once a week to sit down, mm-hmm. talk about the business, talk about fashion, clothing, even just different things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, which has been nice. It's been yeah. really great. You know, so um, today is a, a great day with, you know, I say great day in, in the sense that for us temperature wise, it's like the first... Ugh. It's like the first fall, fall day. Thank right? goodness. Right? I mean, by the time this airs, I mean, we will have other days like this. Yeah, but, yeah. But this is the day where I confidently put on some denim. Some jeans. Some I haven't jeans. seen you wear jeans for a while. Denim but, well, for a while. Yeah. You know, I'm not a guy that wants to wear, <laughs> wear them in 80, 90 degree days. Like, I'm just not that dude. Um, you know, I'd rather wear the tech pants or, or no sure. pants at all. You know, sure. wear a short or no something. No pants. Just no pants. Boo bear it. That's right. I'm just going right. to walk around no pants. I was going to start wearing no pants. <laughs> just sacks. Just a sack. Sacks, sport shirt. coat, and a dress shirt. Yeah. I love it. That's, that's going to be look. that's going to be our look. <laughs> that's going to be our look in the spring. That's should our... we should we do a that guy secret calendar? Yeah, <laughs> I am 100 percent for it. You know, that'll be uh, we all get a birthday month and then like plus one, right? You know, get to do one more. Oh after my that. god, I love it. Um. So yeah, I mean that's exactly what we got going on. Yeah, I know we kind of talked off air, but I mean this leads right into what we're talking about: different styles, different fashions. What's yeah, you know what's going on? Yeah, um, I think that as we enter into the crisper, cooler months, sure, um, we kind of we you know we've done a lot of educational episodes. We've talked about some of the stuff that's upcoming. We've talked about like homecoming and all that kind of good stuff. Right. I really want to kind of like dive into aspects of still, it's still kind of educational. For right? sure. For sure. But dive into the aspect of like specific styles. Right. Yeah. And, and their, and their origins, I guess. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. So I think the first one uh, I want to talk about, which is near and dear to my heart, is probably my favorite aesthetic or style, I guess, other than like, you know, streetwear or whatever. Sure. Okay. Would be. Ivy style or prep style. Sure. That preppy look. Preppy look, right? right? And the interesting about thing about preppy look or or the prep style or Ivy style or whatever the hell you want to call it is that it's it's kind of got this negative connotation that goes with it. At least it did when we were kids. So that's exactly what I was going to ask you. Yeah. I wanted to know if that was like um, a regional thing or like for my location or if it was everybody because it was interesting. You, you, you said this and I wanted to ask like what the connotation was because yeah. me growing up as a kid. <laughs> it starts again. It starts, starts again, again folks. Uh, I'm so leaving the sin. I don't even care. We're just going to have. Yeah, it's fine. We'll just cameras. do the, just do the two cameras. Um, it's fine until that one goes. Until out. that one goes, we'll be down to one. Yeah. But so <laughs> sorry about that folks. One of our cameras shut off, but anyways, um, but growing up as a kid, the, when, you know, that, that used to be like a, a negative term yeah. slang. Yeah. Someone would call you a prep or a preppy. Right. You know, and I, I think back to like Saved by the Bell. I, I was just going to say that. Right? Yeah, yeah. Saved by the Bell. Like we grew up with yeah. Saved by the Bell. That Absolutely. was a thing, right? And, and like Zach Morris was known as preppy. Like yeah. that was that was like a dig. Like people yeah. were making fun of him for calling right. him a preppy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is interesting in itself. I mean, and now I, I would say the main reason for that was in like 1980. The 80s, yeah. There was a book um, that came out, like the handbook to uh, preppy preppy dressing, but it was a tongue in cheek book. It was okay. it was making fun sure. of essentially this entire culture and subculture, if you will. Yeah. Um, being being that that if you're not familiar with preppy, we're just gonna we're gonna dig into it. We're gonna take a deep dive here in a second. Yeah. 
But the over the overview of that is as preppy as you said, kind of referenced it earlier. It's an Ivy League look. It's yeah. it's usually for the people that are in a higher social economic situation, right. um, education, money, all of that stuff. And then, as I said, someone in the 80s, and I cannot remember, it was a, a lady author, I can't remember her name right now, she wrote this thing about, like, the handbook becoming a preppy or something like that, and it was, sure. it was really poking fun at it. So then I think that point forward, preppy, at least thereafter, became I think. kind of a negative term. Right, people, gotcha. people kind of took it as, like, these uppity people, right? Because mm-hmm. that's kind of what it was. Right, 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 right. Um, but it's interesting because it gives us such a, a, a great style. Mm-hmm. Um, the way it performs. Well, I think it's, I think the, the, <clears throat> the cool thing about like preppy is that like now the, you know, the term preppy has always been kind of negative, right? Sure. But the reality is, is if you look at it, it's more, it's really just classic clothes at this point. Yeah. W- w- worn in a different, um, yeah. I- I- avenue or different, a different venture than right, right, right. meant to be worn. So, um, the so so we'll do a little bit of history yeah, lesson. Yeah, let's start quick. there. Okay, so um, the preppy movement became uh, it kind of came to be in like the 1910s era. Yeah, see, it's over 100. 1910s years old. and yeah. 1920s is kind of when it yep. started, right? Um, and then by the 1940s, 1950s is when it became really popular. Sure, and and it became really popular because, as you said, a lot of like the higher end, like the 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 people that were in a higher socioeconomic like level were kids that were going to like Brown, Dartmouth, sure. Yale, Columbia, all those really high end yep. Ivy league, like yep. crazy expensive, you know, yeah. high, high education schools. And back then in like the 1900 or 1910s and twenties and stuff like that, you were required to wear a specific uniform when you For went to sure. school. Yep. Especially at an Ivy League. Yeah, right? I mean, Ivy League schools for sure. Yeah, and then that was, we've talked about this before, it was like khakis or gray pants, yep. a navy blazer, a white Oxford cloth shirt, and then a regimental tie that was specific to the school that you were exactly. going to. Yep. Or it had, and even, and even like in Yale or in, in like Yale, and I think uh, Dartmouth have like a crest that you had yeah. to have on your jacket. Yeah. It was like going to a private school. Yeah, I mean, essentially it was that's a what private it is. school. Yeah. I mean, essentially, I mean, and they might actually be private schools, right? I think I, they I are. Think most yeah. Ivy They're private leagues, institutions. Yeah, yeah. most like most Ivy Leagues are. I mean, and now this is, you know, this also goes all the way back to Oxford and stuff, Great Britain. Right, I mean, right, they all right, have right. that similar dress code. Right. As you said, a blazer, a, you know, khaki shirt. Yeah, yeah. All of that stuff. Um So yeah, that was I mean, that was pretty much all these higher education like, Right. And it wasn't just like college it was like the universities of universities like right. the schools that everybody's trying to get into exactly um which then the word prep if i'm not mistaken kind of came from preparatory schools preparatory academy you know, you know like yeah you got the high schools which you know we call them high schools but they're they're technically like back in that day they were usually men and women they were mm-hmm. separated and they were prep schools they were boy prep schools yeah and they were preparing you to go to ivy league schools right so then they started wanting to dress like the school they wanted to go to. Exactly. So that's where the style kind of originated from, right? Like, yeah. it was a uniform. People started emulating it to, because that's where they want to go. Yeah. Right? You have yeah. to you have to be who you want. You know, you have to dress the way, you dress for the job you want, right? Right, right, dress right. Dress for the job you want. Yep. So that's kind of where a lot of that stemmed from. Yeah. The, the other thing that's really cool about, like, this whole thing is, like, um, the company that kind of started this whole preppy movement was Brooks Brothers. Yeah. And I've talked about Brooks Brothers a lot. I've, I mean, like, I love Brooks Brothers because of their roots in Ivy yeah. style. Very much and, Ivy's. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, in the 1910s, 1920s, Brooks Brothers had been around for a little while at that point. And, you know, I think the big part of that was because the dads of those kids, that's where they shopped. Yeah. Because that was like Brooks Brothers was like the original American men's clothing store. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely one of the oldest. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, all those dads are shopping at Brooks Brothers and like, oh, let's go to Brooks Brothers to get your stuff. Yep. Go to Brooks Brothers, we'll get your stuff. So they originated that that kind of like Ivy style. Right. And then and then it was also one of those things where, you know, they were they were shopping at this men's store and yeah. they were having to it. 
one of the interesting things that I found and, you know, kind of, I did obviously some research on this, you know, to kind of refresh my memory sure. on some of it and kind of get some details. It was, you know, one of the key components aside from the, the aforementioned, you know, preparatory schools, et cetera, was using, um, which we call sports wear, mm -hmm. you know, so sp we talked about the sport shirts mm -hmm. and, and, uh, brogue shoes and stuff like that was which much that era was definitely classified as sportswear, not right. as clothing. Right. And they were, they were taking those clothes and they were wearing them in different arenas, different, different atmospheres than they would normally be worn. You know, you know, these people were big into, you know, the, the, the hunting, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm trying to, cricket, you know what I mean? Just croquet, croquet and all that kind of shit. A yeah. lot of yard games that you see like in movies that you're kind of like, what the hell are these people doing? You know what I mean? White people shit. Yeah, very white. You know, very white folks. And, and you're like, what the hell are they doing out there? Even you know I'm right? like, why are you playing croquet? What's and, wrong with you? And why are you wearing that jacket while you're doing it? Yeah, polo, polo. Polo was another polo. big one. Yeah. Um, And so all of that was happening. And so they were wearing traditional dress clothes at the time. Yeah. And then... Um, Brooks Brothers in particular, they were kind of the ones that, that went, wait a minute. And they realized, and we talked about this just the other day, it was um, probably the episode before this, we talked about Shirt house, weaves, yeah. Yeah, shirt yeah. weaves, and how sometimes um, what is happening out in the market will change the industry. Yeah. And that's kind of what happened. We They, they were wearing dress clothes and in a sportswear fashion. And right. so it kind of created a new category. Right. And it forced uh, companies to take note and go, well, wait a minute. I want to sell to this guy. It's interesting that you say that because um, I, to piggyback on all that, yeah. the uh, originators of the button-down collar shirt is Brooks Brothers. Sure. Um, and I remember reading this article about, um, and I can't remember which one of the guys it was. He was at a rugby tournament. Yeah. It was a rugby, rugby game. Was another big thing, yeah. He was at a rugby game. And the one of the teams had their shirt collars safety pinned down because the collars would come up and hit him in the face. Yeah. And that gave him the idea. He's like, what if we put buttons there and you could button the collar down? That way it didn't it would come keep up. it down. It would yeah. keep it down. It, so. <laughs> but it's kind of, I mean, I say a lot of those styles and trends, they are from the bottom up. They're kind of yeah. forced back. Now, some yeah. of them are top down. Yep. You know, where they say, hey, we're going to try this new thing and it takes off like wildfire, whatever. But a lot of times it's people going, hey, like, this is how we're going to wear this. And then a company going, well, wait a minute. If that's how they're going to do it, let's figure out a way to be the company that does that very right. well. Right, right, right. Um, Brooks Brother, I, I think, did that with this entire yeah. style, right? Yeah, 1910, 1920 is kind of when they really took hold of it. Yeah. In the 1940s, 1950s, it became very popular, like sure. super, super popular just a across the country. Yeah. And at that time, there was a company, which is another one of my favorite companies, called J Press, J Press Clothing. Yeah, for sure. Um, they are the ones who then kind of made it huge across yep. the country. And and they're not as well known now as no. Brooks Brothers is. And I think that's just because they kind of kept in that niche. I say they stayed right in that thing. And, yeah. and, and I think they kind of had their day. And I'm not, you know. Yeah. Um, there's some other companies I think folks would, would, would recognize from this movement. You know, yeah. lacrosse was one Lacrosse, um, Yeah. Um, we said, uh, polo, but Ralph, Ralph Lauren. Lauren. Yep. Um, LL Bean mm -hmm. was on the West coast. It yeah. kind of became a Pacific Northwest, mm -hmm. uh, prep look. Mm -hmm. Um, J crew on the other side, they were in the, that, that was in the eighties. Yep. That's when they started was 85. Right. Um, and they were in the, um, Eastern side, the New East York, side, yep. New Jersey, I think is where they started. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of brands that we recognize today and still, you know, oh, that's yeah. you know, whoever it is. Uh, IZOT was actually. Oh, yeah, IZOT. IZOT yeah. was originally from yeah. them, in which we see them at like the, the lower, you know, mm -hmm. the Walmarts and the, the whatever. Um, so a lot of these brands started out there. Now, some of them have pivoted and moved on to a new look or a sure. new style or whatever it is. Yeah. You know, but it was it was that rugby look. It was the polo look. It was that um, something that. You know, and I, so here's the, you know, the little sidetrack. I mean, I can assume that at some point in time you were called a prep, right? Growing up, oh, like yeah. we talked about negative kind of, right? Yeah. So I was definitely called a prep at some point in time. Mm -hmm. And now I will also state that as I was called a prep here in Illinois, I was not dressing like Ivy League prep style. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like I was not wearing a, 
a navy blazer. I was no, like, you had like a shirt with a collar on it. They're like you pre- preppy, precisely. Whereas precisely. I was the opposite. I was wearing like navy blazers <laughs> and penny loafers and walking around. And they're like you prep, and I'm like, oh, cool, thanks, cool, thank you. Hey, yeah, look at me, hundred <laughs> yeah. percent, exactly. That's yeah, yeah. probably exactly the encounters yeah. we had too, because yeah. because yeah, I mean, I was. I was. I was wearing a shirt with a collar yeah. or, or something you, of that. You prep being like, prep. You know, and it's like, what? and it was such a negative thing back then. And so, like, I was definitely called a prep growing up and had some styles. But it's something I was interested in as I was kind of researching this was because I, I, uh, I had noticed that styles that we see, and dare I say it, you know, I'm, we're not, like, censored, so I'll say it, but the the style that I'll commonly refer to in the collegiate level now, like bros. Yeah. Bros have a lot of prep <laughs> tendencies, they right? Do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like oh, yeah. so it's like the the athletic prep. Yeah. It's like yeah. you understand that you're an athlete and so you're trying to whatever, but the reality of it is you're still you just like took the jacket off. Yeah. Because, you know, as I, I talked about the brogue and the all that stuff, but like, and we talked about it in one of the other episodes about like the Nantucket look. Yeah, like that. That that that. that yeah, that's that, prep. Yeah, it is. You know, yeah. boat shoes. Everybody, the member of the big Sperry's. Yeah, Sperry's, the Sperry's was a, yeah. Like that's a prep look. It is. Like that's straight prep. Now that's said, that's eighties prep, but it's, it's still prep. It's like still prep. that's when that's kind of when those Sperry's kind of came in. It was in the eighties. Yeah. You know, wearing a boat shoe. Yeah. Was exactly <laughs> a reason you'd get called a prep. You know what I'm thinking. <laughs> Have you seen the movie Take Me Home Tonight? Take Me Home. I know the name. Topher Grace. Okay. It's set in the 80s, and he goes to, like, this party. He's trying to, like, hook up with this girl. I always think it's Kristen Stewart, but Alyssa's like, that's not Kristen Stewart. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> Whatever. You're like, I don't care who it is. And Anna Ferris is in it, but oh, yeah. Chris Pratt is in it. That was, like, one of his first one big his movie roles. Movies. Okay. And he plays this douchey, preppy guy who wears the big pleated khaki pants, the boat shoes, yeah. and the... The po- pink polo with the collar pop. Collar pop was and another thing. And that's that's what I'm that's what I envision. Like when people talk negatively about preppy, I'm like, oh yeah, I, that get, I get right it. There, that but that's not what I think of. Right. I think of like you know like Miles Davis and like Gordon Parks and yeah. JFK and stuff like that. That's what I think. Which, of. which is what the look originally was. Right. But then there was like these subcultures, as I said, like the Nantucket, yeah. the Nantucket prep, yep. where he had the, the red and the blue yeah. and the white. That was a prep look, but it was like yeah, a yeah. subculture of prep. Yeah. And the 80s had a prep, like you said, the pop collar. Yeah. I'm just curious. As I said, it's it's, it's oh, kind no. of. <laughs> oh, no. No, no, this isn't bad. This, this, is isn't, this isn't bad at all. <laughs> but you said it, and I'm just curious if this was ever a thing in, like, growing up for you, and if this was, if we're still in this category of, like, I feel like this is still the double polo. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I, I got to go. <laughs> I got to go. I got to go. Okay. So it's funny you bring that up. It's funny you bring that up. I remember in the, so in the. 2000s, yeah. so 2000, like five ish, 2007, 2008, somewhere in that range. Preppy style had a huge ex- exploded back onto the scene. Sure. Right? Like it was big in the 50s, kind of died out. Big in the 80s, kind of died out. Early 2000s was huge again. Yep. And I remember going to Route 21 in Pekin. Okay. With my mom. And like when I was in high school and seeing a polo shirt that was a just a single shirt, but it had two collars, two collars. on it. Yeah. Two, two collars. collars sewn into it. Oh. I was like, what? And on the mannequin, they had one popped and one laid yeah, down. One and I'm just down. like, what the hell's happening here? What in the fuck is going on? Yeah. But it's funny you bring that up because here's why. I got the J Press but look book yeah. like, and they send out every year they send out like every season they send out the fall. Like I got the fall winter one. I have to bring it in, but it's like a book. Like it's like a hardback like art, like nice book, book, right? But it's like their look book for the season in one of the pages in there. I'll, I'll find it. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, There's no. a picture of a couple of guys hanging out on like a park bench in front of a lake and they've got on slim fit chinos. Of course. Boat shoes. Yep. Two polos. No, they don't. Yes. In, in 2022? Yes. Double popped collar polos. I was like, <sighs> That's what? A, it's coming back. It's a thing, huh? What? But, I mean, you look at fashion. You look at everything yeah. that's going on right now. The 80s and 90s are huge again. Uh-oh. 
No, it's okay. We're fine. Oh, okay. The eighties, nineties, early two thousands are huge again. Yeah, and I so you know we and we you kind of struck a like a memory chord for me when you were talking about that how it came because with the double pull, I mean, obviously it was. It's so ridiculous. I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty sure I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did it. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty sure I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I, had a, I had a friend who, who used to do that. He was like, he would like, we would go over there and hang out and like, we would bring like friends over there that didn't know him and he would come out and he would have double pop collar polos. And I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, bruh, it's double pop collar Thursday. And I'm just like, <laughs> so and he's just do it just to mess with yeah, me. Like, What's mean, wrong with you? And I just said like, some of it was fun, some of it, but whatever. But like, I was, you know, so you gotta think that era, I was just getting out of high school into college or whatever. Yeah. Um, Style was really becoming my thing, so I was really exploring it deeply. Sure. But I was thinking back other styles that were popular, like the cuff jeans and stuff. And yeah. and, and so I remember this pretty well. Um, I remember, like, there was, gosh, it would have been late 80s, early 90s. I was still elementary school or whatever, mm-hmm. like, going into, like, the big two-inch cuff was yeah was a thing. Yeah. You know, it was that was a legit cool thing. Um and then I remember it started getting in the early 90s, mid 90s. We had the tight roll cuffs for a bit. Yeah. You know, to where the pants were still whatever, but then you yeah. sucked them down and you did the tight roll. Zach Morris. Yeah, Zach Morris. <laughs> it, it was, right? And you yeah. had, um, you know, and then I, I just kind of reference it to now in 2022. I mean, I don't today, I have like a, you know, little, you just got the seam cuff. The seam cuff, cuff yeah, which yeah. is kind of my thing a lot of the times yeah. is a seam cuff. Um, but the two inch cuff is definitely fully back. Yeah. Well, it's funny too because like being in Illinois, yeah, we're like two inch cuff, cuff the jeans, cuff them up, yeah. and then like you look at like New York and they're just like, no. uh, we're past that. We're back to we're back to full pleated giant nineties pants. It's like what? Yeah. I mean, it, it's, what the hell? <laughs> it's definitely one of those things. And I mean, I I always reference it that yeah. you know we have a time thing. You got L A and New York. Yeah. Usually the front side of things, yeah. From from European looks and front side things, then you'll catch uh, Chicago and other Midwest cities about a year mm-hmm. later, mm-hmm. maybe a year and a half, depending. It feels like Peoria is like five and a half years. Later, <laughs> I, sometimes, and I know we make that joke a lot, but but then, but you do you get you get in the more rural communities out of those Midwest cities. Yeah. It's it's really an uh, it it really is an eighteen month to twenty four month yeah. timeline from yeah. when it actually is a thing. I love a cuff jean though. I know. And I, it, I love cuff jeans. I, I love to put a cuff on jeans and chinos. I mean, we talked about this before. Right. Even my dress pants have cuffs now. Like yeah. every single pair of dress pants I have has cuff. Um, but it's definitely it's all rooted in that same exact. Yeah. You know, the prep style for over a hundred years now mm-hmm. has kind of. Had its ebbs and flows, mm-hmm. right? I think it's getting ready to come back. Yeah. yeah. I think it probably is too. I mean, so, you know, with that being said, that's a pretty good history, pretty good, like, yeah. you know, we've and we've talked about the basic look of it. Yep. Um, do you see, I mean, is there any other areas of um, prep or this next coming of the prep that you, you see happening? Um. I don't know. I'm looking at, uh, you know, as I, as I, I, I often do is I watch a lot of different brands and look at their websites and look at their catalogs and all that kind of stuff. And, and pretty much like, tr- like traditionally or not traditionally, I shouldn't say, but like majoritively throughout all of the brands that I watch, mm-hmm. Oxford cloth shirts are going to be huge. They're coming back. Be Big interesting. Time. Yeah. Big time. Um, like every single one of the companies that I watch has an Oxford cloth wow. shirt in their, in their arsenal for, their, for fall. That they're coming out yeah. with. That's interesting. I mean, and, and, you know, not, not any different than any other thing, any other business, you yeah. know, um, if you can't create something new, yeah. You tweak still, it, tweak it a little you bit. You still have to, but you still have to do something, right? Yeah. Because here's the here's the question that people are often asked: like, why should I go buy a new shirt? Why should I go buy a new whatever yeah. if it isn't any different than the, the one I have? Right. So I mean, yes, it's frustrating for people out there, you know, like, oh, well, this is perfectly fine. Why are they changing styles? Yada yada. Yeah. Well, part of it is, is I mean, they're a business. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like they're trying to continue to grow and and keep things moving, keep the keep the economy, everything moving, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So sometimes style is dictated simply because of that. Yeah. It has little to do with 
yeah. with things like that. Um, a little story, and you know, because I think we have a, a bit of time here yet. Yeah. Um, you know, you're talking about the resurgence of uh, the prep style in the 80s. Mm-hmm. There was a, a book I read. Um, it's by Malcolm Gladwell. Oh, okay. So it's the guy that wrote Blink and Tipping Point yeah. and all those books, right? Yeah. And uh, it's one of those two, actually, that it's in there. There's a section on there about the the penny loafers mm. and how they, and, and I've referenced this once before, but, like, how they took back off. But a lot of it was was, like, that, that Shoho was in Shoho, and it was, like, this whole prep resurgence. And it all started with the penny loafer mm. that some guy found at a Goodwill store. Yeah. You know, um, got them, started doing this dress. Next thing you know, like companies just just yeah. explode because it, a, a style took off. It was a new look on that style. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which obviously we didn't mention penny loafers, but kind of the boat shoe category. I, I have a, I have a list of things I want to go through that, yeah. are, that are, that are, you know, pieces of, 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 prep of look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I'm, I'm excited to hear some of these. Yeah. Okay. So obviously we talked about Navy blazers, Yep. right? With the gold buttons, if right. you can find Navy, it. Navy blazer with gold button or a brass, brass button or pewter, I think is like a more modern Probably. sort of a version. Right. Yeah. Um, another one would be like a khaki pan or Chino. I, I, I would, I mean, obviously if you're trying, if you're trying to do like a modern version of a prep look, mm-hmm. go with a sl- slimmer fit Chino. Yeah, yeah for sure. that's the look. For sure. Um, or gray flannels. As we get into the chillier month, a pair of flannel dress pants, gray flannels, yep. key. Yep. Um, we talked about this before. Oxford cloth dress shirt with a button down collar, yep. something like that. That's very, very preppy. Um, regimental tie. I'm, I, I surprisingly don't have one on today. I have a pin dot tie. Usually I'm yeah. wearing some sort of shirt. Let's shirt. give a, for the listeners, a yeah. regimental tie. Yeah. So, so they're, Explain they're, they're either called a regimental or a rep stripe, right? Okay. So regimental is more of like the, like you would classify it as like a, like a military stripe, you know? So you can get like a Navy, Navy regimental stripe or army regimental stripe or whatever. A rep stripe tie is going to be a tie that represents some sort of an organization you are a part of. Perfect. Right? And it can be, you'll see a lot of, like, if you Google rep stripe tie, it'll be the red and navy rep stripe, gold and navy rep stripe. Yep. That's usually the first two that'll come up. Two most popular. Um, other ones you can get are, are going to be, like, a pencil rep stripe, which I wear a lot of, which are, like, it's going to be a navy base with, like, a really thin stripe going through not the it. big broad not the real stripes. not the big you know equal size ones it's yeah. going to be a thinner one that got, kind of goes through yep. you'll get ones that are are you know brown like there's a company called smart turnout uh okay. which is i think a uk based company but if you go on their website and you look at you look for like a rep stripe tie they have like Brown, Columbia, Yale. They have the those school, traditional, the yeah. yeah, old school rep strap ties for those specific organizations. Yeah. Um, I like a rep strap tie. Yeah. I think it's cool. Yeah. Um, it's just different. And if you're part of that well, club, I shouldn't awesome. say I shouldn't say it's different, but it's you know you don't see a lot of people wearing those now. Right. Well, definitely not where we live because we don't have a lot of the Ivy League schools. Right. Out right. Here, right. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. So rep strap tie sure. definitely. Okay. Uh, penny loafers was on that list, and and for you guys that don't know, the originator of the penny loafer is G H Bass. Yep. Um, and they still make them. They call them. They're called Weegians now. That's what <laughs> they used to call them. Um, they brought those back around, and they've got them in like, like, brown and white two tone, where the where the the top of the stitch part is white and oh. it's yeah they're really cool they're okay. they're pretty cool that's looking. a neat look they've got them in suede now they just launched them in suede and i'm i'm like this so close, close to i'm i'm about to order a pair um but they're they're beautiful um and i i love a, a good penny loafer yeah. which i surprisingly don't own one of those which is weird <laughs> i think <laughs> there's i think they're so cool but i'm not gonna yeah. lie every time that i think about getting one i just i end up with a driver instead yeah I you see know, that. They're yeah, very I similar, I but I just end up with a driver. And see, I have a wide foot. So I think right. that, like, I have a pair of drivers. I don't ever wear them because my feet are so wide. Yeah. Just drivers like, are narrow. Yeah. yeah. They are. Um, uh, some of the, the stuff that, that is more um, prep, I would say, that mm-hmm. are lesser known are things like saddle shoes. 
Yeah. Or like for a sure. buck, like a like a white buck or a na- natural color buck or something like that. Yep. Which um, is interesting because the buck uh, is also commonly like the the most common timberlands, right? Yeah. Which is kind of interesting. Yeah. yeah. Where they got yeah. that look from? Yeah. Just just throwing yeah. it out there. Yeah. Everybody knows rock about Timberlands. That's right. Um, uh, a good pair of saddle shoes are awesome. I've I've mm-hmm. some of those. Those are GH Bass as well. Um, rowing blazers. You know what a rowing blazer? is? I don't is? know that I know what a rowing okay. blazer is. So a rowing blazer is Maybe a I need one. Is a you might need one. All I'll right. show I'll show you some pictures when we go off here. Um, a rowing blazer is a specific blazer for guys who are on like Gale's rowing team. Okay. And it's and it's a it's a blazer like a like a you Normal know a blazer, blazer. Yeah. yeah, but it's got really big bold stripes going through it. Oh, I'll, sh- I'll show that you. That sounds fun. They're cool. That they're really cool. Fun. You can't. It's they're really hard to find, oh, but they're of awesome. They are. There's a company called Rowing Blazers in New York who makes them, and they're they're really cool. So awesome. We'll, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look at them. We'll look at them. Yeah, we'll look at them. Um, I also want to touch base on like a couple of style icons. Yeah. For for this, we t- we already talked about before we bump off to that. Yeah, I wanted one last like thing that I wanted to add on this prep yeah. list that you have here. Yeah. Because it was a picture that's still in my brain. It it, it <laughs> and I don't. I need to tell you a funny story. If we have time, I'll tell at the end. But yeah. so it is the the sweater. Oh yeah. That like the. The bright colored sweater, oh, yeah. the white shirt, but then you like sometimes do the one knot around the t- there. Oh, that, that is on my list. Or Jumpers. You, or Jumper. You, or you tie it around your waist. Yeah. That, ju- that was a prep thing, right? Jumper is, Jumper Brit- is a British a, term. That's a British whatever. word, jumper. Like a tennis sweater. It was tennis sweater. Yeah, tennis sweater. Yep. But it was like the bright, and you would you'd tie it here or yeah. you tie it around your waist. But anyways, yeah. go yeah. on with some yeah, yeah. icons. I just couldn't let that one pass because yeah. it was right there. Yeah. Uh, so um, for me, it's like, it's like, like I said before, Gord Parks. Okay. Miles Davis. Yep. Um, Dustin Hoffman in The Graduate. Oh, wow. What yeah. a nice reference. Right? Exactly. Yeah. He's got the corduroy sport coat on. Yeah, I kind of want a corduroy sport coat. I do too, man. I might get one. Oh, dude. I'm get telling one. you what. Mm. I might get one. Um, Paul Newman, just in general. Like, Paul Newman is. You see pictures of Paul Newman just in his everyday life. He's got, like, the tennis sweater on and, you know, yeah. corduroys and whatever. Um, just a very cool, like, all around. JFK, obviously. Obviously. He, like, I mean, he went to, I think he went to Brown or something like that. I don't remember. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty yeah, sure. I don't, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, it was yeah, Ivy League yeah, for sure. Yeah, Ivy League, definitely. Yeah, I mean, the Kennedys. Yeah, obviously. I mean, you know. it is the definition of a prep. I say, I would say a modern style icon for this preppy thing, okay. which no one's going to be surprised by this, Sid Mashburn. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. That's for kind sure, of where sure. he started, you know, his company is is in that preppy movement is like in 07 was all that. And, yeah. and you know, now it's just, that's just what it is. There's, there's a... A recording artist that kind of popped into my head too, um, a couple different ones. I'm trying to think. I'm Bruno Mars, yeah, okay, kinda in a little way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I can't think of the other. I'm trying to think of the song right now. Try to remember the name of it. But there's a couple guys that are kind of, kind of in that that realm mm-hmm. where you go, oh, all right, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, but Bruno kind of makes me think that way. Well, maybe John Legend might have been the yeah. other guy I was thinking of. Okay. Yeah, I could see that. You know? Yeah. Um, I don't know. But, yeah, so, I mean, definitely there's – it's a thing, and, I mean, it evolves. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I think it's – it all originated from wearing classical clothes mm-hmm. and, like, a sporting way. Yeah. Would be a a, 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 a layman's definition. Yeah. I, w- I would agree with that, yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I also wanted to touch base on some of the, the companies, like the brands, the stores that do kind of this preppy style. I mean, we talked about Brooks Brothers. We talked about J Press. They've been around for forever. We talked about Ralph Lauren. Um, another one that, that is more of a modern company that's, that's really rooted in that is a company called Ships. And they are in Japan, okay. actually. Okay. Um, and the really interesting thing about Ships is – that um, they recently purchased a, this company called Southwick, which is in the yeah, New Hampshire we were, region. We were just talking about them. And Southwick is actually the, the the tailoring manufacturing company that is in America, and they weave everything in America, and they tailor awesome. everything in America, and they are the the original house that made 
all of Brooks Brothers stuff. Oh wow! Yeah, I didn't know Southwick was Brooks Brothers yeah. manufacturer yeah. originally. Well, that's so amazing. so they made all of all of Brooks Brothers stuff, and wow. then Brooks Brothers moved in 2020 to a different company to make all the manufacture their stuff, and then they were getting ready to close, and South or, and then this company Ships came in and bought it, and they were like. It stays in America. We're having everything made in America. It's an American company still, but they are the ones but that they own, own it. it. Yeah. Sure. Which is cool. That happens. And that's yeah. awesome. That's good that it's still there. Yeah. Um, and they're still doing business. Yeah. You know. Uh, there's a, two other ones that are, are British. I talked about Smart Turnout. Yep. Uh, Drake's of London. Okay. Um, and then there's another company called Gant. And Gant does more of like the apparel side of things. So they okay. do like the sweaters and you know, that kind sure. of stuff. Drake's is more of like the tailored side of things. That so. was, and you said sweaters. That was another thing, like varsity sweaters. Varsity sweaters, oh. the varsity jacket. I want a varsity jacket. I'm not going to lie. I almost, if it would have been a little cooler out, I was going to wear my varsity Psycho Bunny sweater. Oh, man. It was just that too hot. So cool. It's so cool, but I'm not going to wear That cardigan one you yeah. want? Yeah. That's pretty dope. That's a really cool <laughs> one. Yeah. So I am, a, I, I would say, like, after all of the years of getting in. I'm not going to lie. Schoolyard fist fights over this. You know what sure. I mean? Because yeah. it was derogatory, yeah, man. It was, it was yeah. a derogatory. Yeah. I would fight and fight and fight. And be like, I'm not a prep. I'm not a prep. You're a yeah. prep. You know? Yeah. Um, bro, I'm a prep. I'm, 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 I'm proud. Sure. I've been a prep my whole yeah, life. I'm proud I, to be a prep. I am. Like I said, yeah. I may have named it a few different things throughout the years. Yeah. But I mean, the look itself is, you know, obviously. Uh, that it's, classic. it's classic. It's classic now yes. at this point. It's a cool look. Yeah. I like it. So go be preppy. It's go be okay. Preppy. Be preppy. Look, it's fine. Embrace it. Be Don't, Zach Morris. It's fine. Right. Like that dude wasn't. That dude wasn't. That dude without, was cool, man. That dude was he was cool it. as hell. That dude man. was the coolest. And that's the only <laughs> reason people hated preppy is yeah. because here's the reality of it, and and it's 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 knowledge that has allowed me to get to this point. The reason people made preppy a negative connotation was out of jealousy, yeah. envy. Yeah. And, and the reality of it is, is, is if there's a lesson I can say today is there is plenty for everybody out there. Yeah. It is not a lack world. If you want something, you can have it. It doesn't matter what the other guy has. You can have it too. That's right. So don't worry about what the guy in the other lane's doing. Worry about what you're doing. You can have anything you want. It's, it's really that simple in the world. Um, embrace prep looks. It's fun. Yeah, it cool. looks cool. Yeah. If someone calls you a preppy. It's probably a backhanded compliment. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably the truth. Man. Probably is. They probably want to be in your shoes. Yeah. So I agree. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Style Sessions. Uh, if you like the episode, make sure you give us a big like, comment, subscribe, do all that kind of good stuff. Um, if you have any questions for us, reach out to us. It's pureathicsecret.com. Find us on social media. All the links are listed down in the description. And uh, have yourselves a good day. Peace. Stay preppy.